Another day, another Sao Paulo off-duty wrecking a couple of armed robbers. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today, another good guy win, really a woo boy win, out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. Watch the motorcycle come down the road there. They see that guy and they're deciding, you know what, we're gonna rob this guy of at least his cell phone, maybe his wallet. So they flip around. Dude's just walking down the street. They're gonna run up on him here and you're gonna see the guy come and grab his cell phone. Two dudes on the motorcycle there. Uh, although, you know, there's no weapons pointed at this point. He doesn't have it and he, you know, pushes him over and an off-duty cop saw the whole thing happen and he comes in, guns a-blazing. Now he, you know, keeps shooting. The first one drops, the second one drops. Uh, he killed them both. Both of those guys took the asphalt temperature challenge. No weapons were found on them at all. And so there's going to be some interesting legal questions on this one. Uh, our dude did get his cell phone back and he was unharmed. And uh, we're going to think about some lessons. I got to admit, Judge Dredd rolling up there and coming in guns blazing was uh, impressive. How about you? What do you think? Two dudes on a moto in Brazil is absolutely a prelude to an armed robbery. You see that kind of thing coming, you better pay attention. In fact, in most of Central and South America, you know, again, every culture is different on this one. You see two dudes on a moto in Africa, two dudes on a moto in Asia. It's a totally normal thing, but in South and Central America, very different indeed. So know your cultural cues that an armed robbery or, you know, an attack is imminent and make sure that you are preparing for that. So this guy's just walking down the street. I think he did pay a little bit of attention, but he might have missed the fact that they were paying attention to him. And therefore, he just kind of bebops down the road. Otherwise, maybe could have taken some way to, to make yourself a little safer or at least prepared for it. I love his attitude here, though. Now, listen, let's think about the robbery itself. They roll up on him and two dudes jump off the bike. Now, again, you can see there he's just pointing a hand at him. And now what are you going to do? They say, oh, give me your stuff. I think he could have ran here. Again, they, they don't have any weapons, but I also think here that given what we see every single day in Brazil that, you know, hey man, uh, he could have easily thought these guys are gonna kill me or hurt me if I don't give them what, what they want. And so he could have definitely seen this as a deadly threat, though I don't think necessarily that he actually did. So running around that other side of the car and, and getting away would have been a great idea. Now instead, they grab his stuff and off they go and it's gonna frustrate him, make him mad about stuff. And I will say this, you know, he's facing disparity of force here. And, and therefore, you know, again, it's not just one guy, they're stealing his stuff. He has every right to stop them from doing that the world over. Now I'm talking American law here, not law anywhere else. You certainly have the right to stop somebody from stealing your stuff. We talk about proportional force though, right? So if they're threatening you with ordinary force, then ordinary force is what is reasonable to use in reply. And that's exactly what our dude did here. So kudos to him, well done to him for all of that. But the disparity of force, there's two guys threatening him. He might feel like, no, they would put me in the hospital otherwise. But instead, he uses ordinary force. Now, I don't know if he's got a gun on him. I don't know if he has any other options, but this is entirely appropriate. I wanna stop these guys from stealing my stuff and so I knock them over on the bike. Now, that said, you now have two angry dudes probably that you gotta deal with, so you better have some fighting skills if you're gonna do that. Remember, attitude is the foundation of active self-protection, but you better have skills and plan to back that up and not just be like, yeah, that's what's up. I'm gonna show those guys what's going on. Well, instead you better have something to do. Now let's think about our guy here who comes in as a wrecking ball and he's shooting already. First of all, I think shooting while your motorcycle is moving, that's, that's bold. Uh, that's a very difficult shot for sure, no question. But uh, secondly, you're probably gonna have to shoot one-handed. We'll talk about that in a minute. But again, is it reasonable for him to be winging shots at these at these guys? And, and I, I'm gonna say that I think at the end of the day that I can't say beyond a reasonable doubt that it's not. Because again, the totality of the evidence, I got two on one, now I'm in a scrum. These guys are definitely going to be angry and they are you know in the midst of a, a forcible felony, stealing from the guy and threatening him with harm. Plus they have, a you know, disparity of force because again, they've got two of them that are assaulting him, a single person. So I could reasonably fear that he is at risk of death or great bodily harm. 
I think at least that's the argument I would make, but I'm going to tell you it's kind of dicey and you're going to get some looks on stuff like this in the U.S. for sure. I think probably in Brazil would be okay. I do want to also say here, you notice this little artifact, you know, it looks like he misses by a country mile and, and you know, the shot breaks and then you see that little puff. But I think actually what the reality is here is this is why we want to be careful with surveillance footage and we want to be careful with video evidence because what that actually is, if you go watch the subsequent shots, that's actually the smoke from his round that just barely caught his headlight beam is what it is. So it's not a ricochet off the pavement way over from them. It's actually what I thought it was at the very beginning. That's actually the, uh, the, the uh, smoke from his rounds. That said, hey man, hits count and only hits count and I don't think he's hitting anything here so make sure, again, your marksmanship is very strong and I can't imagine how much more difficult it is on a moving motorcycle that you are having to balance yourself on. Hopefully, you know, I don't know if he's got it in, in park here, not in park, obviously, in neutral, those kinds of things. So now he's shooting single-handedly here on these guys. And you know what's funny? This is probably one of the few times that I think shooting single-handed might be the way to go because his left hand is on the clutch and, and therefore he's keeping that motorcycle from moving forward on him. And so he may need to, this may be one of those times, you know, not dropping the baby or something like that, that you gotta shoot one-handed. So practicing that strong side shooting is I think a very good thing in those kinds of circumstances. If you're riding a motorcycle or those kinds of things might be something that you need to spend a little bit of time on. And remember, you got to put the bumpy things on top of the gun on the guy and make sure you're getting hits because misses don't end gunfights. I don't know how many shots he hit. Uh, I do want to say at some point you got to stop. But look at what's going on here on the guy who's in the middle of the street. The guy in the middle of the street, he looks like he is reaching at his waistband for sure. And, and our off-duty officer in his statement said that he started shooting when he saw what looked like them reaching for weapons. As he came up, they started reaching for weapons. And when he saw them start reaching for weapons, he started shooting. Now, this is obviously after he started shooting, so uh, I don't know that the video evidence could show that, but but it looks that looks to me like somebody making a furtive gesture. So I can still justify here, oh, wait a minute, I started shooting, he started reaching into his waistband, I had to put him down. Okay, fine. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not sad for these guys at all. As we say here all the time, they paid the band, so they get to dance to the tune, and in this case, the tune is the Asphalt Temperature Challenge but I don't want anybody here to go to prison for using force that is inappropriate. So make sure there's objective, reasonable evidence for when you use deadly force. Hey, I do applaud this private citizen who used reasonable, ordinary force to stop these guys from shooting at him. I thought that was a pretty good way to cover your ASP.